coming up. What is it like to come back to Salt Creek? I still remember when it happened. Evil beyond compare. Why, Dad? Why? The Salt Creek monster... Oh, my God, he wants to kill us. ...was jailed for terrorising two backpackers. Had to fight to survive. But that hasn't stopped him wreaking havoc. And I got told to watch my back. Now he's targeting his own daughter. I'm really scared that Dad's going to come after me when he gets out. I'm really scared. Children of criminals are often forgotten victims. Trying to reconcile feelings of love and loathing for a law-breaking parent can be confusing and damaging. Even if the children are adults, they can face challenges, as 36-year-old Kendall knows too well. She's the daughter of Roman Hines, better known as the Salt Creek Monster. In 2016, he lured two backpackers to a remote campsite and violently sexually and physically assaulted them. That they managed to escape him is remarkable. Accepting her father committed this evil act remains difficult for Kendall, but adding to her conflict now is that even though he's locked away, he's turned his aggression on her. It was an incredible show of force. Police in pursuit of Roman Hines. The then 59-year-old had terrorised and tortured two backpackers on this lonely and wild stretch of coastline before the 23-year-old women made their audacious escape. Tuck your legs up, OK? And if you kick me, I'm going to belt you, all right? But his arrest on the 9th of February 2016 at South Australia's remote Salt Creek was not the end of this extraordinary story. So what is it like to come back to Salt Creek? It feels fairly different. Like, let's, you know, like, remember dirt roads all the time, constantly going, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Or well, you were, what, four or four something? Four, my last time being down here. The 36-year-old Kendall, Salt Creek, 200 kilometres south of Adelaide, is not a place of horror. Instead, it conjures up sweet memories of camping and fishing, of precious time spent with her father, Roman Hines. I miss the dad that he was before it all happened. Today she's returning on an incredibly complicated journey, trying to reconcile the dad she knows and loves with the monster of Salt Creek. I feel like I'm in a jigsaw almost. I feel like I'm lost, you know? I feel like I've lost dad. Fearful of reprisals, Kendall has stayed in the shadows since Heinz's conviction. Now she's speaking out, about the confused and contradictory feelings she has for her violent father. You know, you sh shouldn't have to hide your emotions in China, you know, hide who I was. It was not easy. And it's only in the last two years been strong enough to say, yes, I am his daughter. It was like a horror movie that became real life. Beatrice and Lena, two backpackers at the mercy of a man who suddenly switched from trustworthy to terrifying. I was in the middle of nowhere. He was there. I was tired. What could I do? Like, nothing. They thought they would die here amongst the sand dunes. Oh, my God, he's just totally insane. Like, he wants to kill us. But their fight to live was stronger than their fear. We knew that we had to fight. We had to do whatever was needed to survive. Finally, local fishermen came to their rescue, calling in police to catch Hines, whose brutality horrified not just the nation, but the world. No one said a word to me, and they were all looking at me just with big eyes and totally in shock. Now retracing her father's despicable steps, Kendall reveals, like the rest of us, she saw his arrest on the news. I remember watching two police officers and they, you know, they were putting him to the ground and put his head into the sand. And that was enough, I guess, when he got up, which was enough that I then realised it was Dad. Shock and disbelief. Kendall's reaction was not unusual. But as it did then, this daughter's love for her father means even today she believes his account over that of the women he assaulted. Do you believe that your dad had done it? I didn't know what to believe, and I still to this day don't know the, the truth behind it. There's just too much 
inconsistency, things that just don't add up. And like, I still, I question things. Despite Kendall's doubts, her father's guilt is beyond question. Indecent assault, aggravated kidnapping and endangering life. Convictions upheld at appeal. Roman Hines has so far served seven years of a 17-year sentence for what he did to backpackers Lena from Germany and Beatrice from Brazil. As they told me in 2017, Hines had agreed to drive them from Adelaide to Melbourne, but made an unscheduled stop at Salt Creek, where he set up camp. How did Roman Hines convince you to move away from the campsite? He convinced me that there were kangaroos in the back, and he said that he saw some footprints. And he said, like, ah, would you like to go to see? And I said, yes, why not? But there were no kangaroos. Instead, Hines, armed with a knife, hammer and rope, pounced on Beatrice, tying her ankles and wrists. He ripped my bikinis and started, like, trying to kiss me and lick me, you know. And that's when I screamed for Lena. I had just one chance. Lena! And that's it. And then he started punching me and he threw me on the sand. I heard the scream and I went around the car. And... And you knew what, that it was from this direction? Or no, it came from the left direction, definitely. I saw them. She was lying uh, in the sand dunes naked and Roman was standing over her. Let her go! Let her go! I was like, oh my God, this can't be true. Then I, yeah, I got really angry suddenly. I was like, what the hell does he think he is? Like, <laughs> he can't do this. And then um, he was coming after me and I was, um, I was running back to the car. Lena was desperate to get to her phone to call for help. But Heinz got to her first, smashing her head with his hammer. I was like, oh my God, that's it. I gonna, he's gonna bury, bury me in the sand or something. I thought that's the end because the, the smash was so hard. What followed was a drawn out and brutal fight for survival. Firstly, Lena raced back to untie Beatrice. Then she headed to the sand dunes with Heinz on her tail. For more than a kilometre, Lena ran for her life. He finally reached me with the car and just bumped into me pretty much in my back. So how many times did he do that to you? He did that like I think four times and always bumping into me with the bull bar. And then I flew away in the sand, but always stood up again. Heinz lined up his car to hit her once more. But a frantic Lena, now at her weakest, somehow found a superhuman strength. I thought like, okay, I have to do something because I can't keep on going. And so I pretty much ran towards the car and just jumped on the bonnet and I was holding myself on the antenna of the of the car and then pushing myself up on the bonnet and then straight going onto the roof because I I thought like okay I'm safe on the roof he can't get on the roof I'm laughing because <laughs> I can't help it but it's because you're so extraordinary like how did you think to do that how could you do that physically, it's incredible. I felt like a bit like in a movie, it felt, <laughs> felt like James Bond a bit. Through the awful events at Salt Creek, brave Lena and Beatrice are now the public faces of Roman Heinz's depravity. Less well known is the devastating impact of Heinz's offending on his daughter, Kendall, who considers herself his forgotten victim. In her first meeting with him in jail back in 2016, Kendall was already struggling with the emotional tug-of-war of love and hate. What was it like when you did meet with your dad? It was hard. It was very hard. In what way? Because there was no contact. You would get told off if you were to hug the person or, you know, they wouldn't allow it. It was really hard and I was just so angry and so hurt. 
and constantly just going, why? You know, what were you thinking? Really, what happened? Like, you know, and when you ask him, it's always, you know, it's not how it seems. It's like, well, tell me. I want to know. Just tell me. As Heinz revealed in court just a fortnight ago, his version of what happened is to paint his victims as liars. He was appealing a police plan to destroy his four-wheel drive. He wants to have further testing done on the car to prove his claims Lena was never on the roof, despite the blood splatter photographed at the time. It's a story he's also told Kendall. Do you accept that your dad's version is a version that he wants to tell his daughter? That telling you the truth, it, he doesn't want to do that? Yeah. I feel that he's not going to tell me. He, I feel that there's a hidden story there. So he's... then you have to believe the girls, don't you? I believe most of it, but some things that I hear, I just go, hmm, things don't add up. His version of events is so unbelievable that it's unbelievable she believes it. <laughs> Yeah, and I think she just wants to hold on to, at any cost, this um, perception of him not being the Salt Creek monster, not being this, um, you know, this evil person who could, you know, commit these, these crimes. Forensic psychologist Dr Kim Delarty says Kendall's need to believe her father's version, no matter how sketchy, is not uncommon. To believe otherwise would shake her very foundations. It jeopardises her perspective of him, therefore her identity, and that's not something that's easy for children to do when the parent is usually seen as a, an extension of their identity and an extension of who they are. Even if that child is now a 36-year-old adult? Yeah, look, these, these processes can take a lifetime to manage. You know, it can take them time to, to realise that their behaviours haven't been normal and the dysfunction they were raised in as well can also be quite um, conflicting for them to understand. Six in the barrel. But as you're about to see, Kendall's greatest conflict now is despite her vocal support of her father, she has become his number one target. I'm really scared that Dad's going to come after me when he gets out. I'm really scared. Do you really think he would hurt you? Yes, sadly, I do. These home videos of Roman Hines have never been seen outside the family. They starkly show two sides to the one man, a loving father to his cherished daughter, Kendall. You've got a super talkie. See, look, oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's celebrate with your best friend. You like spending time with your dad at that I age? Used to, I used to love it. I used to be, I hate going away from dad. There's never a dull moment with dad. Six in the barrel. But the other side to Heinz is that of a man who likes guns and is prone to violent outbursts. Heinz is currently in jail, serving a 17-year sentence for his attack on two backpackers in 2016. I thought that's the end because the, the smash was so hard. We knew that we had to fight, we had to do whatever was needed to survive. All these years later, Kendall is yet to come to terms with the crimes of her father. I just constantly go, you know, why, Dad? Really, why? Do you accept that you'll probably never get the answer? I'll probably never, ever, ever get the answer that I would hope for. He really has no answer that will satisfy you, does he? No. I just feel that he needs to properly say he's sorry. There is no apology and no remorse. Instead, just threats as Hines turns his rage on Kendall. Are you on drugs or just plain stupid? Are you serious? This is just one of the many abusive letters Hines has recently sent Kendall from jail. I've had enough of this shit with all your dramas. With my she claims... No buts, no ifs. She's also had warnings of worse to come. And then I got told to watch my back that there was people that were going to come after me that Dad knew. And who told you that? So I got told by people that knew Dad. Did the people who contact you tell you directly what the threats were? They told me to watch me, my back, that Dad's, you know, Dad would sort me out when he gets back, gets out of jail. And what um, did you take that to mean? 
that he was going to come after me. And so I'm scared to be in my own town that something could happen to me. It is an intriguing contradiction, but along with the fear of her father, Kendall welcomes his contact when he sends his artwork from prison. Artwork that speaks to Heinz's fascination with Salt Creek. Clearly, Kendall is in deep conflict. So what are your emotions about your dad? Mixed emotions every day. You know, trying to, you know, there's the, yes, I love my dad, but I hate the fact that he's in there, that he's not here for my kids. He's missing so much. Do you hate your dad for what he did? Yes. To those women? Yes. What is there to love? He's my dad. You know, I learned so much from him, you know. Everyone, yes, deserves a second chance, you know. So I guess I've learned to forgive him for what he's done. And I don't forgive that easy. So when she says, I will always love him because he's my dad, that makes sense to you? It does, it does. And I think, you know, most children want to believe that their parents are good people regardless of what they've done. And I think for her to hold on to this belief that her father, she loves her father, um, there's parts of him which is still redeemable, um, is only natural for children um, and for, you know, for adult, adult children as well. But forensic psychologist Dr Kim Delarty, who specialises in the treatment of violent sex offenders, believes Roman Heinz's lack of accountability makes him irredeemable at this point. Knowing that he is sending abusive, threatening letters to her, demanding that she does his bidding, what does that tell you about him seven years on? Volatile, erratic. The artwork that he's been sending to her, which really depicts a lot of anger within that, and the threats um, are consistent with someone who has not achieved rehabilitation. Kendall's torment about her criminal father may not be unique, but it is sad to see someone searching for a past that is forever lost. To make sense of her conflicting emotions and to pay homage to Roman Hines, she's writing down her thoughts about the dad she remembers from her childhood. What will your book say about your dad? So it's Salt Creek Monster, The Daughter's Tale. It's about the good side of dad, so him growing up, so a bit about his life bit about my life leading up to the trial. So my happy moments, my sad moments, where I felt betrayed. I felt that I'd lost my best friend. It seems Kendall's book will also ultimately be a farewell to the father she pines for. As torn as she is, Kendall has decided his threats against her mean she can no longer have anything to do with him. You've said you've forgiven your father for what he's done. So what do you want from him? Like, what do you want the future to be with him? For him to leave me alone and never to contact me or my kids again. For myself, I feel that, you know, yes, I love my dad, yes. But I, sadly, I don't feel that I want anything to do with him again because he scared me too much. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our extra minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.